Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I'd like to continue with our series of videos focusing on mathematical optimization by taking a look at one of the most famous numerical optimization algorithms out there, namely the gradient descent method. So if you've been following along with the series, you know that in our previous video, we introduced the concept of uh, unconstrained optimization and introduced the ideas of stationary points, gradients and hessians of the cost function and conditions of optimality. So if you aren't familiar with those terms, please take a moment to stop and watch this previous video before continuing with the discussion today. Now, if you remember in our previous video, what we did is we said, okay, you've got some type of a cost function, right? And the cost function has inputs of your decision vector x and it spits out a scalar cost. Uh, of that, which sometimes is no denoted as J, right? So again, in one dimension, what this looked like was you just had uh, X, a single decision variable, and then you had something like F of X. And what this looked like was, you know, who knows? It's some, it's some function like this, right? And we said that in our previous video, we actually outlined a process to go about and find the extrema or the stationary points of this function by basically finding where the gradient was zero, right? So all of these were candidate x's that might be minima of this function, right? And then what we did is once we identified these stationary points, right, we applied a second derivative test to all of these points to characterize the nature of these stationary points and determine if they were maxima, minima, or neither. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but the problem that you might come across is what if this function f is too complicated to analytically solve for where these stationary points are located? Or even worse, what if this cost function is something like a lookup table? or it's something where you can't even go ahead and uh, characterize it analytically. It could be a lookup table, it could be experimental data, where now, instead of this continuous function, you basically just have data points, okay, uh, of what the function is at given different locations. Well, now this analytical approach might not work so well and we're actually forced to turn to numerical techniques. All right, so the general idea with numerical optimization algorithms is actually uh, pr pretty simple and it's easy to conceptualize um, with a very simple example. So let's consider a case where you know, you've got a two-dimensional cost function, meaning you've got two elements in your decision vectors, an x1 and an x2. And what I've got I've just drawn um, a, a simple contour plot of this cost function. It's just some arbitrary thing I made up. It almost looks like a hiking contour map because that's one way you can definitely think about this. You can think about it, you know, the cost here is high at 40, then this line is all the cost of 30, then here's the cost of 10s, or sorry, 20s, 10s, and here's another kind of a peak you can kind of see. So the idea with the numerical optimization algorithm is you're gonna start somewhere in this uh, decision space, in x1, x2 space. Um, I don't know, let's make something up. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you start here, okay? Let's make a little X here. And let's call this point your initial guess of X zero, okay? So X zero is sometimes referred to as your start point. Right, so this is a vector, a two element vector. It's a location in X1, X2 space that you start at and you're gonna ask yourself, um, is this a minimum of my problem? And if it's not, I need to do something and try to get a better decision vector which is closer to a minimum. So all you're gonna try to do in this process is, again, it's really quite simple, is uh, here's where you are right now. You're just gonna try to move in some direction. So uh, I'm just gonna arbitrarily draw something like, you know, over here and then you come to another location let's call this new location x1 right so here's your first place that you move to so we're going to go from x0 we're going to move then to x1 and then again you ask yourself the question is is this now a local minima do i need to stop and if not then you just kind of repeat this process you say all right i need to move somewhere different i don't know maybe move to here and you come up to a new location, which is now we're calling, uh, I think, X3, or sorry, no, X2 is <laughs> the ordering, right? So X2, you check, am I, at the, am I at a local minima? You know, you check some criteria, and if not, you just kind of continue going like this, and then now maybe you reach some minima at X3, 
and then you stop, right? So hopefully the idea is you generate the sequence of uh, decision vectors until you reach some local minima. Right, and then you terminate this process. So it's really all you're doing with these numerical optimization algorithms is you're just starting from start from some arbitrary start point, and then you're going and moving through the space, and hopefully trying to get better and better as you move along until you reach a local minima. Right. So um, this process we can describe this in a actually a very simple way, or a very simple algorithm. Right, is by basically saying we can say something like uh, the next point. Point, xk plus 1, right? That's where we're going to move to. We saw from this process over here is you basically just look at where you are right now. That's x at step number k. And then all you're going to do is you're going to move in some direction by some distance. That's literally all you're doing, right? So we can parameterize that as I can say something like this. And uh, oops, sorry, I wanted to make that an alpha. Um, an alpha k times a dk, okay? So in this case, this um, x of k is your current location, right? In, uh, whoops, location, right, in, in your decision space. And then uh, dk is just a direction, Right, so it's a vector. It's the, it's the direction in which you want to point or the direction you want to move, right? So this here is, again, maybe we should denote that this is a vector, right, um, in Rn, right, where n is the dimension of your space. So again, maybe we can write this is, a, this is also in Rn, right? And you have n decisions to make. So you're just going to pick some direction in decision space to move, and then you're going to move by a distance alpha k. So alpha k. So this is sometimes referred to as a step size. And this is a scalar, right? Because you can see you have a vector. Usually this is going to be a unit vector. It doesn't always have to be. But again, if it is a unit vector, then this alpha here is literally telling you how far do you move in that direction. So all you're doing, again, you start at some location, you pick a direction, and then you walk in that direction by a distance alpha k. Then you pick another direction. Again, hopefully it's a unit vector direction. And you walk in the direction alpha k, and et cetera, et cetera. And you just follow this iterative pattern um, until you uh, reach a local minima, right? Now, it, that's pretty simple, right? So really, if you look at this scheme here, you look at this, it's a very simple iteration scheme, right? You can think about this. This is basically like a for loop or a while loop, and you're just going to keep doing this, starting where you are, picking a direction, picking a distance, that gets you a new location in your decision vector space, right? So you stare at this thing long enough and you see there's really only two decisions that need to be made, right? So you have to decide on two things at each step, right? So the first thing you have to do is you have to do, decide um, how do you choose a direction? dk, right? And then the second thing you have to ask yourself is how do you choose a step size? Alpha k, right? Those are the only two kind of quote unquote user uh, pickable or user tunable or user choosable po um, por portions of that algorithm, right? So uh, that's going to be the discussion of a kind of a, a larger discussion. Um, what we can do is, if you are able to pick these, let's talk about how this generally works. So, tell you what, give me a second, let me, let me erase this. And let's outline then uh, a general algorithm of how this is going to go about. So, what you are going to do is, uh, let's outline a rough algorithm or some pseudocode. Pseudocode for, let's call it numerical optimization uh, algorithms. Okay, so in this context, right, we saw in the picture that I unfortunately just erased. The first thing that you're going to do, right, is you're going to start um, at a point, and let's call this xk, right? It's the current location, right? So sometimes you can probably just initialize this with your best guess of what you think is the optimal solution. So let's just say initialize with best guess. OK, 
okay? So once you have a point x, k, we saw that, okay, the next thing you have to do is you have to pick a direction, right? So we're gonna say choose direction dk. Okay, and this is where the uh, <laughs> this is where it gets interesting, or where you have multiple choices. So there are tons of different ways to do this. There's uh, what we're going to examine today is a technique called the gradient descent. But this is one of many. There's other, uh, there's tons of other ways you can pick a direction. There's something called Newton's method. And I could continue listing this da 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 over and over, but let's just say how, how about others, <laughs> right? There's many different things you can do when you're picking your descent direction, okay? Um, then next is you need to go ahead and choose a step size, right? Uh, alpha K. Okay, and again, just like we saw with the, with the direction, there's many, many different ways you can do this. You know, the easiest is maybe, uh, you know, like a constant step size. Um, you could do what's called uh, line minimization. Uh, you could do, there's the Armijo rule. Uh, there's things like, um, again, maybe let's just let's call it others, right? There's plenty of others. There's Goldstein's rule, diminishing step size, et cetera, et cetera. Again, you could list this out forever. Um, uh, uh, okay, so you've got those two things set, and now we basically just need to implement our algorithm, step four, right? So this is now compute x of k plus 1, right, which we said was just x of k plus alpha k dk, right? Okay, and then once you get your new point x of k plus 1, what we're going to do is you're basically going to check for termination, right? Basically, we're asking, do you need to stop uh, or not? And again, there's many ways you can check for termination. So one is until you uh, reach a stationary point, right? That's probably the best time to exit, right? Um, maybe you don't need to reach a pure stationary point. You could look at when the norm of the gradient of your cost function at the location xk plus one, if this norm is less than some tolerance, maybe then you stop. Um, another one, you, maybe you stop when you exceed a certain number of steps. Uh, let's call it a step limit, right? You don't wanna keep doing this forever. What if your algorithm stalls? You might wanna stop. And again, you, you can stop. Uh, th there's plenty of other quote unquote termination criteria. And again, if you look at this, this is where the richness with numerical optimization comes in because there are tons and tons of different ways to do this. In fact, all of these different methods could probably fill up an entire book. And in fact, you know, here's one of the best books uh, outlining all of these, like, well, not all of them, but a lot of different popular methods uh, of how to go about implementing this uh, numerical optimization algorithm. So this is nonlinear programming by Bertsikis. And again, I, I would highly recommend this if you're interested. Now, one thing I will mention then is because this is such a rich field and such a large topic, there's no way we're going to cover all of this in this video, um, or in fact, in, in met multiple videos. So I've broken up the discussion into several different videos. So what we want to focus on today is we are only going to be looking at this component about choosing the direction using the gradient descent method. There are separate videos on the channel that look at, okay, what if you want to choose the direction using Newton's method or conjugate gradients or others. So these are in other videos of how to choose different directions. Similarly, with the step size, I have separate videos discussing each of these step size methods, like the constant step size or the line minimization or the Armijo rule. So all of these other things are in other videos. Again, so within the context of the the large, um, the, the set of pseudocode for how to implement these numerical optimization algorithms, today we are only going to be looking at this part. I wanted to have this discussion though about the overall framework because this is sort of the first video in our series of 
numerical optimization algorithm. So I think it's pertinent to outline sort of the roadmap of where you could go. And again, this is the foundation and the fundamental idea. It's really quite simple. It's a pretty uh, reasonable, easy scheme. It just has a lot of choices of how to implement that. So again, we're going to be looking at just the gradient descent method for choosing the direction. And we are going to uh, put all of the information for some of these other concepts in separate videos to kind of keep this thing manageable. Um, okay, before we leave this, maybe I will mention one other thing. Um, you notice I called this a direction decay. Some people refer to this as a descent direction. So if you hear that terminology, all that is talking about, I just want to make a, make a quick side note. Let's talk real fast about descent directions or also sometimes descent algorithms because I think it's relevant since we've got all this on the board right now. So a lot of times when you are picking all of this and you're implementing this scheme, sometimes it's desirable or you want to have the direction you chose choose yield the property that f of k plus 1, whoops, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, f of x k plus one this should be less than f of x k okay so what this means physically right is again uh, this is the cost function value at your current location x k this is the cost function value at the new place that you are we are going to step to a lot of times you want the cost function to be lower than where you started. So what this is telling you is that if you if you can make this true at every step of your algorithm, it basically guarantees that the cost function value is going down and down and down and down and down, right? So if this is true, sometimes people will say that the direction you've chosen is a descent direction because it yields a smaller cost function value. And therefore the algorithm you're implementing, it can be classified as a descent algorithm because the way it works is by lowering the cost function value at every instance or, or at every step, right? And again, this makes sense from a from an optimization minimization perspective because if you can make this happen, you can pretty much guarantee that you should hopefully converge at a local minimum because every time the cost function value is getting lower and lower and lower, so you should hit some of these termination criteria um, eventually, all right? So uh, again, I just wanted to mention that, that sometimes you might see direction, sometimes you might see a descent direction. In fact, I think in this video, I, I may interchange some of the, the discussion between between uh, descent direction and just plain old direction. Keep in mind that descent direction usually means that you are you are decreasing the cost function value. Now you can imagine that this is you know this this is great, but you don't have to have this be the case all the time, right? There might be some of these situations where you need to pay a little bit of penalty by increasing the cost function value before you get to a, a, a very small value or a minimization. So for example, you know you have something like this. Right. If you're sitting over here, right, you might want to have the cost function value go down, 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 down. And if you only allow the cost function value to go down, maybe you end up over here at this local minimum, right? But you can see that if you were willing to allow the cost function to increase a little bit, you might be able to find this second smaller minima that might do even better. So again, I just wanted to bring that up because uh, we've got all this on the board right now, and I think it's it's relevant. Okay, so. So with that being said, I think we set the stage. We've got the framework for the algorithm. Let's talk about the gradient descent technique for choosing the descent. Uh, let's see, I just did it right there. Choosing the descent direction or the direction DK. All right, so the gradient descent method, um, I'm sure you've heard of it because it is probably the most famous technique and method for choosing a direction for your numerical optimization algorithm. Um, the concept is actually really, really simple. Um, again, I think the easiest way to think about this is if you have a two-dimensional cost function um, and therefore you can visualize the cost function as almost like uh, the, like a contour map uh, that you use when you're hiking in the mountains, right? So for example, here's a screenshot over here where you can see there's these two peaks and you can imagine that if you're sitting at one of these high peaks or some of these high cost function values and if you're trying to get to a low cost function value well the easiest thing to do is just to kind of quote unquote go downhill or descend the gradient basically go in the opposite direction of the gradient remember that the gradient is going to point in the direction of steepest ascent um, so you want to just go in the absolute opposite direction so that's all we're doing with the gradient descent method is at every single time you are basically going to assess 
this and say, hey, I'm sitting on this cost function or I'm sitting on this mountain. What is the steepest downhill path that I can take? And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head off in that direction. And as you can see, this might work for a little bit, but eventually the contours may change and you may need to reassess and think about, uh, well, now which way is the steepest way down the mountain, right? So that's the general idea. So let's talk about this um, mathematically. So again, we said that this means that the direction you're gonna choose at step K is basically going to be, you're gonna take the gradient of the cost function at this point, right? And remember we said that the gradient, when you compute this, it's going to put, it's going to give you a vector which is in the direction of maximal function increase, right? So I don't want increase, I want decrease. So all you gotta do is stick a negative sign in front of it. And literally that's it, right? This is um, the direction of maximal descent, right? Now, a lot of times you may also want to normalize this so that it is a unit vector, right? Remember that the gradient, there's no guarantee that the gradient is gonna be a unit vector in case I would be dumbfounded if the gradient was a unit vector, you got really, really lucky. So instead, what, what people typically do is we should normalize this so that dk is a unit vector. So in order to do that, all I need to do is just divide this thing by the norm of the gradient at the current location, right? That's it, right? So now this is a unit vector right? And it is a descent vector as well. In fact, we can prove that right now that it's a descent vector because if I move in this direction at the location XK, uh, XK, the cost function value should go down at least instantaneously, right? So let's just go ahead and verify that DK is a descent vector or descent direction, however you want to think about that, right? So if you remember from our discussion on differential calculus, where we were talking about the concept of a directional derivative, right? We said the directional derivative of some function f in a direction of a vector b, right? We said this was basically the direction b dotted with the gradient of that function, right? And this was true, right? if uh, the, the magnitude or the norm of B was one, right? So again, remember the idea with the uh, directional derivative is it tells you that if you were uh, at a function value somewhere in this function f and you move in the direction b, it tells you how does the function f change? Does it increase, decrease? What's the rate of increase or decrease, right? So let's just plug in appropriate values uh, for our descent direction. So in this case with gradient descent, the direction that we're going to move, well, it's right here, right? So we're going to move in negative norm f of xk, right, all over norm gradient f of xk right, times uh, the gradient uh, at the current location, right? So the gradient is the gradient of the function at the current location, right? So there we go. This is the directional derivative of the function at location xk when we move in the negative direction of the gradient, right? Okay, so if you look at this, um, let's, just, let's just maybe write some parentheses, or let's rewrite this slightly. Let's go ahead, I'll put the, the negative one over norm of this thing, f of xk, right? I'm just gonna pull the negative and this thing out. And then what you have in parentheses here is we've got gradient of f of xk dotted with gradient f of xk, right? Would everyone agree? Uh, okay, now um, I think if you remember that this is basically, this is the inner product of two vectors, which is is the square root of the norm, right? So in other words, if you have a vector A and you inner product itself with A, right? Isn't this um, basically uh, the norm of A? Uh, this, wait, this, the square, this thing has to be, yeah, square, square, yeah, th th this is true, right? Okay, so just looking at this, this is a vector dotted with a vector. It is therefore equal to the norm of the vector squared, right? So I could basically, let's rewrite this term in front, F xk times, this thing in parentheses now becomes what? It becomes the norm of gradient of f of xk squared, right? 
like that. Great, okay, so now look at this. The, oh, geez, I missed the minus one. Don't forget that minus, right? That's important. Okay, so this thing cancels with one of these, and what do we end up with? We end up with negative norm gradient f of xk. Okay, so this is the directional derivative of the cost function in the direction dk, right? Using our gradient descent method. So let's box this up, right? And the reason this is important is because if you look at this, this norm, this is a norm of a vector. So the norm is always positive or equal to zero unless you're at a stationary point, right? And so for, so the negative sign basically means that this entire thing is always less than or equal to zero. Right? So what does that basically tell us? It tells us that the cost function value at the location xk, if you move in the negative gradient direction, it is guaranteed to go down or stay equal to zero. And in fact, if you think about this long enough, the only way that this thing is, is actually equal to zero is if gradient f of xk Right, if its norm is equal to zero, right? If you look at that equation, that's clearly the only way this is true, right? Do you remember? This is the definition of a stationary point. Basically what we're looking for. So this is awesome that for mostly, the most part, I can take get rid of this, this equal sign, right? Because the only time it's equal is if you're at a stationary point and therefore you're done. That's what we're looking for. So if you haven't terminated the, the algorithm, we see that this is basically going to guarantee that the cost function value should go down at least instantaneously for, for infinitesimal um, steps, small step sizes, right? So this is great. This is basically showing us that uh, using the gradient descent technique, using this as your descent vector or descent direction is going to make sure, or at least mathematically, it's telling you that um, you should be decreasing the cost function value, right? And again, I'm going to put that in asterisks because we're going to see in some situations where this can cause, uh, I don't know if I want to call it problems, but it can cause challenges here. And this might not always hold, right? We got to remember that this is basically true for infinitesimally small step sizes okay so um, and maybe to hammer this home let's go ahead and look at an example um, let's look at a 2d quadratic okay so what I want to look at is let's look at some cost function f of x right which is uh, I'm gonna write it like this 1 half x transpose hx plus g transpose x plus r so in this case let's use x as being a two-dimensional uh, decision vector h is going to be a uh, two by two square matrix of one 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 two let's use a g vector of one two and an R scalar of just positive two, right? Just something like that, okay? So uh, i tell you what, this is our, oh, sorry, my sloppy handwriting. This is actually plus, this should be a plus. There we go. Okay, so I'll tell you what, let's run over to Mathematica and just plot this and visualize this and ask ourselves, if we start at a location, uh, let me pick a point. How about, let's say X zero. Here's our initial guess of minus five and, 12, okay? If we start at this location, let's see if we can just compute what is the descent direction we want to use by uh, applying the gradient descent technique to this cost function, okay? All right, so let's jump over to Mathematic and take a look at this now. All right, so here we are. I'm just going to go ahead and define the cost function. And as you can see, if we were to expand this out, it's just a uh, two-dimensional quadratic in x1 and x2. So we can actually plot that just to get an idea of what the function looks like. And here is a surface plot of it um, with x1 and x2. And as you can see, it yeah, there's clearly a minimum, right? There's a bottom of this bowl that we would want, uh, want to find using this numerical optimization routine. Um, let's also look at maybe just a contour plot that might be a little bit easier to understand. And here's a contour plot of that same cost function. So you can see we're starting at the location of minus 5 and 12. So that's like up here, maybe at this green band. And now what we want to do is we eventually want to try to reach the bottom of the bowl, which you can kind of see is somewhere, I, I guess it's probably zero, 0, it looks like here. But 
we want to go ahead and compute the gradient at our x0 location and start uh, our iterative algorithm process. So that's what we're gonna do next is again, look at here's the location of interest that we're starting at x0. Now what I need to do is let's just go ahead and compute the gradient like we've done before. And you can see here is the gradient of the cost function. And then the gradient of the cost function evaluated at the location x0 is just positive eight and positive 21, right? So all we need to do now is basically choose the uh, descent direction to be the negative of this vector and then normalize it so it's a unit vector length. So that's all I'm doing right here. You can see that this is what we end up with. It's you can see that uh, it's negative eight and negative 21 and then normalize by square root of 505 to make it a unit vector. I guess if you wanna see that in a decimal, it's right here. It's negative 0.35 and negative 0.93. Okay, so uh, it might be easier now to visualize what's going on. If we plot this descent direction on top of the previous contour plot, it might give us some insight into how this algorithm is going to behave. So that's what I'm doing now. Let me just scroll past all of this. So you don't really care too much. Let me see. Here, here it is. Okay, so let me zoom in a skosh and see if we can make this a little bit easier to read. Um, well, the blue dot is supposed to be the location, and I was trying to draw an arrow to show the direction or the descent direction, and unfortunately, I think because it's a unit vector, it's only one element long, the arrow head is taking up most of the space, but you can clearly see that we're going to go in this direction um, for some distance now, right? And that's the whole topic of another video of how do we choose the distance of how far to go. Again, all we're choosing for this video and for this part of the gradient descent algorithm is basically the direction which is in this arrow um, direction. In fact, let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. So this is that same picture zoomed in. And as you can see, yeah, we start here at minus five, negative 12. And this is a direction of length one, which shows you the direction that we're gonna go. And again, if you look at how the contour or the ISO cost lines fall in this, you can clearly see that the idea with the descent direction is we are going in the, ste in the locally steepest downhill direction right that's what this thing does that's how the gradient descent algorithm works so um, you can see it's pretty easy it's fast cheap uh, quick in order to calculate the direction at each step of the algorithm so this is, seems like a pretty good uh, approach now what we should do now though is let's jump back to the board and ask ourselves are there situations where this might go uh, wrong all right so we saw the idea with gradient descent is easy let's think about a couple of scenarios now and ask ourselves uh, is, is there ways that we could run into trouble with this algorithm um so again i've sketched up just a you know arbitrary cost function in two dimensions and let's just take a look at this um so let's use green to maybe look at one situation where everything is fine dandy nothing seems to be too much of an issue um so for example i don't know let's let's say you start uh, right here let's say this is your x1 or sorry x0 you start right here so we saw the idea with gradient descent is that we are going to go in the opposite gradient direction so we're going to go this direction for some distance and then maybe here's a new point x1 okay and then again you're going to go in the negative of the gradient go to maybe i don't know here here's x2 and then you're going to go in the negative gradient here's maybe x3 and then you're going to go down here here is x4 right so this looks totally fine right um and it seems totally reasonable right again you kind of see that we're doing a little bit of hand waving here in the sense that we know how to pick the direction but picking the step size is uh again a topic for another video where you want to use something like um either constant step size line minimization armijo rule all those other cases and depending on how you choose the uh step size distance is going to affect the convergence of your numerical optimization algorithm so for example um let's look at another situation how about what if we had just chosen a different starting location like uh, maybe maybe over here what if what if this was x0 okay now you can see why in this type of a situation you might have a small issue if you come into these long and narrow sections you can see that all right what we're going to do right here is again we're going to choose a location which is in the negative gradient of the cost function so and that's that's in this direction right so maybe you're going to go until here. Here's x1, right? That's your new location, okay? And now you're going to move to another location, okay? And again, you go uh, opposite of the gradient. That's over here. 
right? And then you come, here's your point x2. Does everyone see what's going on here? It's possible that depending on the shape of your cost function, you might not be making much progress towards the, uh, to the, lo towards the local minima in certain dimensions, right? You're not guaranteed that it's gonna converge nice and quickly and and, and fast, right? Because you might be doing this, right? Because the gradient bounces you and it's gonna take bounce, 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 bounce. And it might take you a while until you reach down here, right? So this is one potential issue that you might run into is, is slow convergence. Another thing that you might want to consider, let's use red for another color. Um, I don't know, let's, let, let's, let's make up a point. Here again, here's X zero. Okay, let's say what happens if you're using a constant step size for your, uh, for, for your step size choice in combination with the gradient descent for your direction choice. So you can start here. Let's say we're going to just move again in the, oh, sorry, actually that's a bad example. Let, let me move the point to the other side of this so we can see this a little bit better. Uh, how about here? Okay, here's x zero, okay? So constant step size says, again, we're gonna move in that direction. Let's make it this distance, about you know two inches or something like that. Here's x one, okay? And then negative direction, move for two inches. Here's x two, okay? And then you reevaluate, you go here, here's x three. And then in the negative direction is, here's x four. And then negative direction is maybe this direction by two inches. Here's x5. And now negative direction, here's x6. And then negative direction, x7. Does everyone see what's going on here? You might end up in this situation where, depending on how you're choosing your step size, you might be literally jumping over the minimum and never actually converging to the minimum. So here, you, you, you'd you see that the gradient is not zero, so I shouldn't terminate. So you're just going to jump back to the other side of the cost function, check your termination criteria, and, see, and it'll say, oh no, the gradient is not zero here. You haven't reached a stationary point. So you're going to jump back and you're just going to be bouncing back between these two points forever and that could cause issues. So again, I just wanted to illustrate that while there are some cases where the gradient descent works, works very well, there are other situations where that we might just want to keep in the back of our head um, where the gradient descent might have uh, a slight issue. Right. Um, okay. So uh, tell you what. Let's. Uh, we can make this a kind of a shorter discussion today because a lot of the uh, nitty gritty details in terms of implementing this has to be coupled with some of these other discussions of where we talk about either using line minimization or our Miho rule or something else to choose the step size as well um, in order to complete the entire numerical optimization algorithm. So um, I think what we should do here is this is probably a good spot to leave it to give give everyone a rough idea of how the gradient descent algorithm works. And then in our next video, where we will talk about applying this uh, using line minimization as a step size selection. So um, with that being said, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Surprisingly, if you scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button, it really does help me continue making these videos. Um, another way that you can uh, support the channel is via Patreon. And the nice thing about that uh, technique is that 100% of the proceeds that the channel receives via Patreon is going to be directed towards K-12 uh, science, engineering, and adventures for kids and young adults. So uh, with that being said, I hope I will catch you in one of the future videos. Remember, those come out every Monday, and hopefully I'll see you at one of those and we can all learn something new together. So until then, I think I'm going to sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.